You got me laughing at our inside jokes When we talk I never feel hey, What up, what up world? Happy Halloween, happy Wednesday And welcome back to another episode of Pop Desk Presents I'm your host, Kirsten Collins, dressed as decent And right now my guest at this time is Decent, decent dressed as Kirsten Collins <laughs> There you go Don't but worry about it, I did real good you look awesome in that costume, by the way. Thank you. I thought that it did me justice. Yes, yes. Got everything <laughs> all together, the proper aesthetics. And I'm it worked well. <laughs> Tell the people a little bit about yourself. If they aren't familiar who you are, um, date of birth. Uh, we were getting personal. Driver's license ID, um, blood sure type, um, mm. current address, pay stubs if they are on hand. I feel like I have a flight that I need to catch. Right oh, now, okay. Um, oh, all right, I'm it just, got weird. It just, got weird. Just go real it got, quick. It got weird. It got weird. I'm sorry. But yeah, tell people a little bit about yourself if they aren't familiar with you or your music and everything else that's wonderful about yourself. Oh man, going deep. Well, I'm Chris and Collins. So epic to meet you. I'm so excited to be here right now, and I feel at home on this couch. Don't worry. I am originally from Canada, which is cool. You know, I think so. Great white north. Oh. Apparently we're really kind, so I'm gonna take that as a compliment. Yes. Um, been doing music since I was a kid. I think I was 18 months old when I sang my first song. I have five when I did my first performance, six I wrote my song, and 10 in the studio. So I've kind of just enjoyed being a part of creativity. And now I live in Los Angeles and I'm doing things. One of the things that you know have brought you a lot of acclaim is the covers that you've done. They've gotten a lot of great feedback and they've kind of become a YouTube sensation in themselves. Tell, tell us a little bit about how you came up with the idea to do covers and why yours seem to be so popular. Honestly, I hated covers. I really did not like to do other people's songs. It made me feel like I was cheating on myself. But I had to learn the beauty of kind of interpreting it myself and engaging in a new way. And at first it actually wasn't taken well because people really liked covers um, as the artist did it and, and soon enough it became a thing where it was who could do it the wildest. Um, so Kurt actually was a huge help in that. Kurt Hugo Snyder, just amazing guy, seriously so gifted. Um, he, he one time brought me on and, and his covers with me have just been so magical and just given me a whole new outlook on covers. And so it's been really nice and, and building of my own career so I can know you know, what I like in, in different pockets and taking things from other artists that not taking, learning, not taking, learning things from other artists that I enjoy. You know what they say, great artists borrow, even better artists learn. I, that's there we not go. The same. It's not the same that, he, we made it. We just we, made that the it same. Just, it, hopefully it'll catch on Quote. and be a saying. So how much of, you know, diving into other artists material and kind of picking certain nuances have you used when it came to creating your own music because you know not even joking at least bit like a lot of artists they are inspired by other artists so mm -hmm. you'd be remiss to not announce the fact that you do take tidbits from things that you hear yeah. and things that you see so how did that help when it came to you creating your own music well, I mean, I started listening to gospel as a kid. That was my main focus. I was only allowed to listen to gospel. Um, and Mariah Carey and Winnie Houston and like Stacey Arico and mm. KJ52. And, and um, it was interesting because I, I grew up with soul and meaning, you know, making people feel and engage in things that they never felt before. And it was really a great start, a great foundation to music in general. Um, and then I listened to purely rap and all the nonsense that you could possibly take in and rhythm. And I love to dance and move and, and then dance music. So I could be like, mm, I'm in the vibe right now. And I, I honestly, uh, Justin Timberlake is one of my favorite. Michael Jackson, Amy Winehouse, Rihanna, you know, the list goes on of different talents that I consistently see and find every day. I think it's, you could find someone singing on the street and you're like, wow, that is interesting. I'm going to learn from that today, you know? Awesome, awesome. Give the people a little bit of background behind the song, Call My Name. Recently, I've been really learning about relaxing and enjoying something and taking a second to be like, wow, I don't have to rush or be ambitious to like, strive for something right. um, and so usually I, I love to belt and I love to get it all out there and be like let's hone in right. but um, this song just allowed me to have a just chill vibe in my who I was another side of me and kind of engage with that and so this song is just a really chill love song of like hey call my name yo because I miss you <laughs> that was it 
that was the one. No, 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 even in depth meaning, but I think that that was nice for me to have. Yeah. You know. I'm I mean, a lot of times the song is more about energy than it is about a message. A lot of times about yeah. having fun and expressing yourself and hoping everybody else enjoys that same vibe as well. Yeah, it's the frequencies. I mean, each each song has different frequencies that tap to different moments in your life or triggers of like, hey, I feel this today. So. Awesome, awesome. So, originally from Canada. Originally from Canada. Pretty much grew up there your whole entire life or up until a certain point? Um, I was there my whole life. Um, 14 is when I started coming back and forth to kind of check Los Angeles out. But I still lived over there. And then I've been in Los Angeles for two and a half years. So what's the difference besides the weather, you know? Um, and the politeness. And the politeness. And the free health care. <laughs> and the free health care. And, and everything else. And Drake. Well, I mean, Drake. but then again, Drake is in Calabasas, so. Yeah, he's kind of living both worlds anyways. Yeah, so you guys are kind of like kindred spirits. Yeah, we are. Sense, we but... know we pretty much are homies. Yeah, like... so. Your mother is actually your manager. Yes, she's amazing. She's that momager life. Hi, Mrs. Collins. Hi, mommy. <laughs> but, um, so what's that like? I know... A lot of times it can be difficult working with family, and I'm not saying that in the sense that, you know, they're trying to just take, but they have your best interests at heart. So mm -hmm. a lot of times they kind of lead with their emotions more than they lead with, you know, their minds and, you know, their business sense a lot of times. Do you experience that? Or is your mom just, like, focused on the bottom line and the big picture? Or is it kind of like a challenge sometimes like mom I'm your daughter you know right here and I'm your client right here so what's the balance like in that relationship um I think my mom does a pretty good job of balancing out like she helps out me and all my siblings to be honest and for a mom to do that with four kids is quite ridiculously amazing um but I think that there's a time and place where she's now starting her own music going into her own stuff and I think that you learn the balance as you go and I think that's been this, it's been, there's been rough patches of like, hey, we need to take a step back. And there's been amazing patches like, I'm so thankful that you're looking out for me, you know? And I think that's any relationship. Even if it was a manager from somewhere else, exactly. you, get, you get so close that it is family that it can be hardening sometimes. So. Yeah. So, yeah. So another thing you and Drake share in common, God's plan. God's plan. I told you we're homies. <laughs> Drake, hit her up. <laughs> yeah. Let's get that joint out. Let's get it. Let's get it going. Come on. So, are there any upcoming projects, you know, in the works? Because I know that you've just been dropping single after single after single. Don't get me wrong. We're grateful. Of we course. appreciate it. I appreciate that. But is there a full body of work somewhere down the pipeline that people can look forward to? Because, once again, you've been putting out these songs that kind of feel like they're leading to something and they mm -hmm. kind of do have some sort of like fluidness to them where they can be sequenced in a certain way and we can sink our teeth into an yeah. album. Hmm, what is happening? Yeah, so is there something of the sorts coming along the way? Yes, I definitely can say that. Honestly, in the process of working that all out right now and it's, it's a beautiful journey, you know, it takes time to build something that means something to you yeah. and, you know, preparing yourself and others to be like, hey, let's resonate in this department, you know? And I really felt like releasing a single a month was just such a, a good thing for me to kind of like prepare myself into what I wanted to release to the world to share with who I am. Yeah, and also you get the time to like focus to yeah. see where a project can go when you release singles. Exactly. Because you see what resonates, you see what mm -hmm. doesn't resonate as opposed to just putting out a full body of work and then yeah. having people dissect it and then had the audience split yeah kind of, kind of tend to take your time a little bit more and be more mindful of what people want to hear from you and what you want to hear from yourself as an artist exactly and to be able to put out music you know yeah. i think that as an artist so often we have to wait and be patient and it's very important but it's nice to be able to be like i want to share this right now you know and that's something that's really cool about the industry nowadays is it's you are your boss in most directions of like people want the intimacy with you and that's why social media is such a big thing is because they want to be a part of that journey yeah. so deeply yeah they want a person not a persona yeah, all exactly too much. you know before that was kind of the way of the industry where you didn't know too much unless you yep. saw it on tv heard it in music and maybe read it in a magazine but now with social media you're able to follow the artist yep. on any sort of journey that they decide to take you on yeah you know through the ups the downs you know the very very guarded parts are very you know vulnerable parts mm -hmm. you all get to witness that and i feel like it also adds to the character of the music a lot of times because oh, definitely. you can see like hey i remember when she 
had that down part, and now mm -hmm. this song came out of that down part. And you know, if you use it right, it could be your greatest, greatest asset. And I feel like you are using it right because you know you up there on the gram, you kind of popping a little bit. You Thank know? you. You know, I'm trying. Yeah. At first, I didn't really like social media, but then. One day I posted a picture and I got three really amazing messages that just hit me so hard. I was like, wow. One person just decided not to cut themselves anymore. Another person fixed relationship with their mom and another person was like, I want life. And that right there was like, that's meaning of why you are famous. Fame requires responsibility and if I don't understand that, I don't deserve it. So I really had to check myself and I was like, what am I doing this for? You know, and so. Now I love that. I get the personal relationship with people all over the world. Wow, that's amazing. Decent, you're my hero. <laughs> Kirsten, you're sure. pretty cool too. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Kirsten, we laughed, we cried. We did. We talked about sandwiches. This is Are true. Are there any closing remarks that you have for the lovely viewing audience right now? Anything well, coming up? Anything going away? Any speaking engagements? Bot mitzvahs? Bar mitzvahs. Yeah. You know, I wish I... Do you guys want to invite me some of those? I'll be there. I'm cool. Um, well, last night I actually went to... I guess I can call it my movie premiere. I was in a... I, was, I did my first voiceover. Ooh. Ever. It was quite interesting watching a human sing with my voice. It was quite great, actually. You know? But it was cool. So you should go watch that movie called Never Heard. And they give it a thumbs up and say, yeah, Kirsten, you did great. More movies. And then also um, coming up with a lot more music and the special projects that you were talking about earlier. And just you can keep figuring stuff out of where I'll be on all my socials, which is just my name, technically. Kirsten Collins. Spell it out for them because, you know. Oh, this is true. So K-I-R-S-T-E-N-C-O-L-L-I-N-S music. You heard it first here, live. Don't worry about it. Bam, bam, bam. I knocked on wood. All right. Well, Kirsten, well, decent. Yes, Sorry, the yes, costume Kirsten. is too good. I know, it's just I, flawless. I, almost, I worked all day on this. It's, it's mirror image. Baby. I'm sitting by you too, see? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> thank you so much for stopping by. We look forward to everything that you have coming up. And of course, we're going to make sure that you guys get wind of it on Pop Dust. Once again, this has been another edition of Pop Dust Presents. I'm your host, Decent. Make sure you visit us on all social media at Pop Dust. Make sure you visit our website at popdust.com.